that a lot? All right. <laughs> welcome, welcome to everybody that's on Facebook. Uh, apologize. This is our first time using some brand new cameras, and so we welcome every single one of you. We believe that you're in the right place at the right time. And let's go ahead and pray, and let's get into the Word of God tonight. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for this, another opportunity to meditate your word. Your word is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. We ask you to shine the light of your word to us tonight by the Holy Spirit. Help us to see it. Help us to get it. your message to us in the name of Jesus. We're open to the operation of the gifts of the Spirit should you desire to flow and function that way in our midst. And as always, Father, we covenant to give you and you only. All the glory, the honor, and the praise in the miracle working name of Jesus and by his blood. And all that agree with that prayer said, Amen. 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 Let's jump right into it tonight. Open with me in your Bible to the book of Hebrews, chapter 11. We have been on these Thursday nights in a series that we call Faith Experiences. By definition, we define a faith experience as when you or I experience God in a supernatural way and it leaves us firmly persuaded. It's when you experience God in a supernatural way and as a result of that encounter with God, you are left firmly persuaded. Well, we've been studying the book of Hebrews line by line, verse by verse. And we're gonna keep going all the way to the end of the chapter. There's no hurry, no rush, amen. And we've been looking at the individuals that God highlighted who lived their lives by faith. The Bible teaches us that the just shall live by faith. That means we should do everything we do by faith. That makes the subject of faith and understanding faith of critical importance to every believer. Amen. And so we begin tonight where we left off in Hebrews chapter 11. And tonight we're going to talk about, we're going to call this message, Joseph Spoke by Faith. Joseph Spoke by Faith. In Hebrews chapter 11, verse 21, it says, It was by faith that Jacob, when he was old and dying, blessed, or spoke a blessing, blessed each of Joseph's sons and bowed in worship as he leaned on his staff. Verse 22 says, it was by faith that Joseph, when he was about to die, said confidently that the people of Israel would leave Egypt. He even commanded them to take his bones with them when he left. So we left off in verse 20, so we pick up in verse 21. And obviously we would be talking about Jacob tonight, and he did what he did by faith. But I, I joined uh, verse 21 with verse 22. Both Jacob and Joseph, when they were about to die, they did something. Just like when Isaac was about to die, he promised blessings to his children. Yeah. And Jacob, Isaac's son, when he was about to die, he spoke a blessing over his son, one of his sons, two sons, and he pronounced a blessing over their life. Well, also Joseph, when he was about to die. And, and you all know uh, the story of Joseph. Uh, Joseph, of course, uh, was one of the sons of Israel. Israel's name was changed to, uh, from Jacob to Israel. And Joseph was that favorite son of, yeah. uh, of Israel. And sure enough, he grew up and things happened to him, so forth and so on. But of course, Joseph, as he went to Egypt and then you know, was about to leave and, and, and to die, he, he said confidently that the people of Israel would leave Egypt, because he was in Egypt at the time, and he even commanded them to take his bones with them when they left. So what we're going to look at tonight is essentially that Joseph did what he did. When he did that, he did it by faith. Uh, the first thing we need to know is what is faith. Well, before that, we need to know why is faith important. Faith is important, of course, because it pleases God. Yeah. Faith is important because it's how God operates. Yeah. Yes. Faith is important because we are required to live yes. by faith. Yes. Amen. Yes. 
And, and so faith is important. But then not only that, what is faith? We've learned that faith is, by definition, a firm persuasion. It's a conviction based upon him. In the New Testament, it's specifically referring about having faith in God. But faith in and of itself is neither spiritual. Uh, it's not just spiritual. In other words, when you sat down in that seat, you sat down by faith. Yeah. You were firmly persuaded that that seat would hold your weight. Mm -hmm. When you put an offering envelope or, or, or when you mail something, you, you're believing, you're firmly persuaded that the United States Postal Service will get it there. Amen? Yeah. So you're firmly persuaded. But the, the other things we've learned is how, did, how does faith come? Faith comes by hearing an anointed message and accepting it as truth. Yeah. Amen? Or faith comes by experiencing God in a supernatural way and accepting it as true. And then the last things we've learned about faith is that faith works by saying something. Faith works by doing something. Faith also works by patience. And the Bible also says that faith works by love. So we'd like to keep all of those things in mind when we look at anybody that does anything by faith so we can really and truly know how they did it. In these two verses, or in this particular verse, the Bible says that it was by faith that Joseph did what he did. Yes. Now, if you all been listening to me for any amount of time, you all know there's two people that I want to meet when I get to heaven. Joseph and Job. Because of the things that I've experienced in my life, I have just a high regard and respect for them. Um, just an extreme appreciation for the life and the example of faith that they live. Particularly concerning Joseph, one of my favorite verses as a result is Psalm 105, stanza 19. It says, uh, I, didn't trans I didn't copy that verse right. It says that until the time that his word came, the word of the Lord tried him. Mm -hmm. Psalm 105, 19. Until the time that his dream came to pass, the word of God, the, the, the word of the Lord tried him. And I don't know about you, but I, I've got dreams and desires. I've, I've got visions that I'd like to see fulfilled in my lifetime. And as it was with Joseph, so it will be with us. That until the time of that thing for which you were born for comes to fruition and fulfillment until that time comes, the word is actually trying you. Amen? Well, I mean, think about it. He, start, he didn't receive that dream until he was 17 years old. At age 17, Joseph dreamed a dream and he saw, uh, you know, the sheaves bowing down to him. Then he dreamed another dream and he saw that the sun and the moon and the stars bowed down to him. He told that dream to his father and his mother and his siblings, of course, and the siblings hated him even the more because of it. But also his father and his mother kept those things to their heart. Well, until that time that his dream came, the word of the Lord tested him. Well, we know it wasn't 13 years until he ended up in a place of even beginning to see the dream come to fruition. I mean, immediately, from what we understand, he, at 17, was sold out by his brothers into slavery. Yeah. They took him down to Potiphar's house. He was there trying to serve and do a good job. Sure enough, the, the wife of Potiphar, you know, tried to get, her, get him to sleep with her, and he refused. He said, I'm not going to sin against God. Yeah. Neither am I going to do this against my boss. And yeah. He ran out of his clothes. <laughs> well, he did that because he was firmly persuaded yeah. that the things that God had revealed to him we're surely going to come to pass. Yeah. Amen. He didn't give up hope, even while he was a slave in Potiphar's house. Well, Potiphar, of course, had to let him go, actually put him in prison at, at, in, in Egypt. So he's there in the dungeons in Egypt. Sure enough, a guy dreams a dream, he interprets it. Another guy dreams a dream, he interprets that dream. Sure enough, one of the, the dreams came to pass, and the guy forgot about him, but yet Joseph still kept a positive attitude there. A couple years later, and God remembers because Pharaoh has a dream, and that one guy that he helped finally remembers, you know what, there was a guy that told me to, you know, speak a good word for him. 
In any sense, he told them that in any, Pharaoh called Joseph up from the prison. That was 13 years before Joseph was made second in command. Yeah. Years going by. And I believe he lived a great a life of it and a, an example of faith. Yeah. But even 13 years into it, that wasn't the fullness of the dream. Because in the dream, he wasn't just in authority. He saw the sun and the moon bowing down. That's his, he saw the stars, but that's his family coming and, and essentially being under his authority. Well, he, he, the story continues. Seven years of prosperity came upon the land, and then followed by seven years of famine. The first year of famine went by, and of course, people started to run out of their stuff. Jacob, or Israel, and his sons were still in, in the promised land. They ran out of stuff, and they heard that Egypt has supplies. They send down money to buy supplies, and they come to find that they are in front of Joseph. They're literally having to bow down. And now Joseph is 37, 38, 39 years old, 22 years has passed whole time. His faith is being tested. Yeah. Yeah. You know, when the Bible says until the time that his word came, the word was trying him, what part of him was being tested? It was his faith. Yeah. And if you believe God or if you are believing God for anything, the part of you that's going to be tested is going to be your faith. Yeah. Where are you going to quit believing? Where are you going to give up on your hopes? And your dreams ever come into pass. 22 years. Finally it's beginning to happen. But in all, of course, they went back and took supplies. He sent them back with an assignment. you got to bring your father down here. And I'm keeping one of your brothers. That's going to break our father's heart. He, he, he's the youngest. And the other son was lost. And surely that's going to break. Keep me. But don't let, don't... And, of course, he reveals himself to his brothers. And he says, sin for my father. And, you know, you all will be in a good place. I, you, you know, I've got a place for you. And sure enough, his father comes. He falls upon his neck. He meets his grandson. And before his father, before Joseph's father, who is Jacob or Israel, before he dies, he speaks a blessing over Joseph's son. How does Joseph know that these boys are going to be blessed? It's not just wishful speaking. He's speaking as a result of one of those nine gifts of the Spirit that we talk about. Those demonstrations of the Spirit. Anytime any of us experience God in a supernatural way, it will be by what Paul describes as the nine manifestations of the Spirit. In this particular case, because of an experience with God, Jacob, who is Israel, prophesied, promised blessings over these boys. He could see into the future and declare prophetically that these boys would be blessed. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. Now what's unique is God is no respecter of persons. Amen. If he moved like that in the life of Jacob or Joseph, he can move like that in your life. Yeah. I, I, every now and then I hear my wife speaking promised blessings over our little children. Hallelujah. That they will be great and do mighty exploits in the yeah. kingdom of God. Yeah. And I challenge you in the same way, by faith, speak blessings over your children. Yeah. Yeah. Well, sure enough, Jacob dies. But before the end of the book of Genesis, we see that Joseph is now about to die. And he, in the same way as Isaac, who promised blessings, Jacob, who is Israel, who blessed his grandsons, he now, at the end of his life, is going to speak concerning and speak confidently concerning the children of Israel. I want you all to watch this. This is absolutely phenomenal. So we're, we're in Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 22 again. It says, it was by faith that Joseph, when he was about to die. Now, anytime you have statements like this in scripture, in the New Testament particularly, 
where they're referring to someone that was in the Old Testament and events about their life, it's always good to go back and look at the story yeah. that, they're, the, that they're referring to. Yeah. Because there might be some details there, come on, uh -huh. that you can glean from and not just, you know, take the, the cliff notes. Y'all remember cliff notes? Did y'all use cliff notes? Yeah. <laughs> well, cliff notes, just in case you didn't know, if, if you were like me and you didn't like to read, you had a book report that was due, you didn't want to read the whole book, you could read the cliff notes. Get the basic summation of the story. Mm -hmm. I guess I'll be all right. <laughs> So I want to go back just for a moment and look at it because there's some powerful things here. Now, the book of Genesis, the first book in the Bible, of course, Genesis 1 through 12 tells us the beginning, tells us where Noah was, and we end up after Noah going into chapter 12 where begins the story of Abraham. Of course, the story of Abraham goes on for several chapters, and then he has a son, Isaac, of course, and then we picked up and we looked at the story of Isaac, and then, of course, Isaac has two sons, uh, Esau and Jacob, and that, that tells the story for a while. But then we pick up with Jacob's sons, and it picks up with Joseph, and from Genesis chapter 30 all the way to Genesis chapter 50, Joseph is the main character. Right. Mm -hmm. Twenty chapters in the Bible, in, in, in the book of Genesis. The last book in the book of Genesis is Genesis chapter 50, so go there with me. So we're at the end of the story of Joseph. Now, I just described that everything that Joseph did, he did by faith, he lived by faith. But particularly referring to at the end of his life when he was about to die, verse 24 says that Joseph said to his brethren, I am dying. But God surely will visit you and bring you out of this land to the land which he swore to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob. Then Joseph took an oath. He vowed. He prophesied from the children of Israel. He got a promise from them saying, God will surely visit you and you shall carry up my bones from here. So Joseph died being 100 and 10 years old, and they embalmed him, and he was put in a coffin in Egypt. I want you to get this and make sure that, that, that you're caught up. So again, the story of Joseph, we left off, he was just 39 years old. The dream finally coming to pass. Well, we pick up here in this particular verse, and he's 110 years old. Well, from 39, let's just say from 40 to 110, in those 70 years, he remained in Egypt. His father lived there until he died and spoke a blessing over his children. All of his brothers had land in Egypt. All of his family, and they began to grow and to multiply in those 70 years while they were still in Egypt. Then at the end of his life, when he's 110 years old, he's about to die, he speaks to his brothers and he, he, he tells them, he tells them something that I want to challenge your thought on. He says, God will surely visit you. Let me go back to that. Verse 24. He says, God will surely visit you and bring you out of this land as he swore to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob. Now, how does he know that? Yeah, Abraham made mention of it, and I'm sure he passed it on to Isaac, and he passed it on to Jacob, or maybe not. But what he is speaking of surely came to pass. God did visit them. God did bring them out of that land as he did swear to the children of Israel. Amen. Isaac and Jacob. Amen. What I challenge you to see is that he, Joseph, is speaking by faith, which means at some point he heard an anointed message from God. At some point, he had an experience with God that left him firmly persuaded. He was so persuaded as after this experience with God that he said, I'm speaking to you guys that there's going to come a day where God's going to 